where you're at in the process uh, or in regards to even understanding Medicare in and of itself, if it's a product that you have sold before or if you haven't sold and this is your first year, we really want to just give a real quick rundown today what Medicare is. Um, Medicare is itself, it's the federal health insurance program for generally people who are 65 or older. Um, it does also include a small group of people that uh, younger individuals as well with disabilities, for example, or people with ESRD, which is called end-stage renal disease. Uh, ESRD is where there is a permanent kidney failure that requires dialysis or a transplant. Um, so there are certain caveats to the Medicare uh, product itself that will allow anyone that's under 65 to enroll if they meet that criteria. However, um, as uh, the majority of the population that's enrolled in it are going to be at that 65 or older period. Medicare itself, it, it involves four major parts. Uh, what we would really kind of look at and consider as original Medicare would be the first two parts, Part A and Part B, as well as inclusive Part D. Part A is generally going to be anything that's going to be involving a hospital stay or anything that's going to involve the hospital itself. That's going to be covered under your Part A portion of Medicare and the original Medicare. Part B is going to be what you would really kind of look at as your doctor's visits and things that are going to be involved in the clinics in that aspect. And then Part D, you know, as it makes sense to to be in this aspect, uh, Part D is going to be your drug prescription coverage. So those three things really kind of make up and entail the original Medicare product itself. Um, there is a third part to that in, in the aspect of all four parts considered, per se. And, and that other part is the fact that there is a Part C, and that's what we would call our Medicare Advantage plans, similar to like an HMO or a PPO that you would get, let's say, through employer-sponsored coverage or something that you might find on the individual family plans on the marketplace. That Part C Advantage plan is really an all-encompassing plan for Medicare participants that really take all the parts of Part A, B, and D and combine them into one, um, uh, more or less one plan that's going to take care of all of the needs of what they're going to be looking for. Now, some people may find that original Medicare parts A, B, and D are going to be what they need, and some people may see that part C is going to be really beneficial for them. Regardless of which way they choose, it's really always going to come down to, you know, what you're going to be looking at with them as far as what their needs analysis is really going to uncover as you go through that process and determine and make the best decision for them. Now, since we have a really good kind of basic foundation of what Medicare is, you know, if this is your first year selling Medicare, or even if it's not your first year selling Medicare, you really kind of just have that question, you know, why even want to work with this product? Why touch Medicare in general? Well, one of the main things that you really want to make sure that you have focused on is that if you are going to dive into a product and start selling it as an agent, you really want to make sure that you have a good support system and a good resource system at your back so that you can you know, if you run into a question or, or something arises, you're going to have a really good organization following you with that. I will tell you right now, as I mentioned earlier, I love being a part of the NatGen team. Um, the NatGen team makes up a, a large different bunch of organizations that even recently as, you know, back as 2012 up through 2017, we've acquired uh, many different organizations that have actually now have been glued together to make what we would consider our NatGen family. And really, this is a really strong family that's going to have the resources that you need to be able to answer those questions and be able to really just kind of have your back at a time if you're unsure about something or if you need a question answered, it's really going to be a strong team that has your back to be able to take care of you there. Yet another reason to really look at the Medicare product itself, and this is one of the portions of it that I like, is the fact that you get to work with a an over 65 crowd that is super rewarding to work with. You know, for many people turning 65, it's not a highly anticipated event. Um, you know, in fact, it sometimes can really be the opposite. 
you know, besides dealing with lifestyle changes and financial planning and legal worries, a lot of the seniors, they really have to go out and just try and find affordable health coverage that's going to meet whatever needs they have. And, you know, and let's face it, sometimes within that demographic, that senior population, those medical needs can be greater and really a lot more difficult to really dig down deep and find out what's going on to ensure that they get the best plan for them. So really working with this demographic and this specific crowd to me, besides getting to know your individual client, is it's rewarding in the fact that it's going to reward you in the end notwithstanding the fact that you're going to learn just about amazing things for your individual clients, working with this specific base, um, they're going to teach you something on a daily basis that you don't know as well, too. So it's kind of a symbiotic relationship that both their side and your side are actually getting a really good rewarding experience out of. Now, one of the things that you really want to make sure that you understand though that when you're working with this population is that they really highly value trust and integrity. If they understand and they know that you're coming from a place that you are being sincere, you're going to be reliable, you, you call them back when you need to call them back, you're, you're going to make sure that your commitments are met and you're consistent and you're competent in your understanding of your knowledge of what's going on, this market itself is going to reward you tenfold not only with the fact that the market's going to give you just a wonderful experience dealing with them, but those individuals are gonna reward you with the other R word, which is referrals, and the main R word, which is residuals, because they're gonna to continue to be your client as the years come. Now, to, in order to get those residuals, you wanna make sure, of course, that the market's gonna be stable. With the way that the market looks now, this is an amazing product that you really deeply, if you haven't already looked at, really want to consider selling. And the main reason for that is if you take a look at the quick graph here is by the year 2030, one in four in the U.S. population is going to be over 65. 25% over the age of 65 by the year 2030. That is just an amazing number to think about. You know, the fact that the pool is growing consistently every day, 10,000 new people eligible for Medicare every single day, that is just an amazing number if you think about it. Besides the fact that it's growing and evolving, it's really a good opportunity for you for somebody who actually really wants to assist this aging population. Now, a lot of people actually want to do this in the aspect of the fact that they really feel that they're doing the greater good. And that's where my heart is at as well, too, is you're providing a service for somebody and providing them with a product that's going to, in the end, really benefit them as a person, as a human being, and really take care of their needs. And as long as you're doing that and you're making sure that that need is met at that point, again, it's symbiotic. They're going to actually be able to send back to you those referrals of the, the base of their friends and be able to call them and be able to build upon that book of business. So it's just a, it's an ever evolving wheel of, of relationship back and forth with each other. So the, the figure that I found from CMS, 2017, approximately 48 million people received Medicare benefits. Again, that is an amazing number. Looking at this chart here, the way that it really kind of breaks down, you know, looking at that, you know, you've got about 17% that's on a Medigap program, about 24% on an Advantage plan, and you know, possibly 15% on Medicaid or and or a disability of some sort. But the real thing that you really want to focus on here is one portion of this pie that we're going to really kind of drill down into, and that's this portion of the fact that there was no supplemental coverage for almost 5 million seniors last year. So if you, if you really take a look at that, you not only have a book of business that you have the, the availability to work with that's going to continually be your residuals as the years to come, but you have an ever-flowing pool of opportunity to choose from as each new year goes by. So looking at that, 5 million people, that is just an amazing number. So last year, 5 million people went and were just awaiting somebody to contact them. So this year, even more, of course, as those numbers increase as we move towards that 25% portion when it came up to the 2030 year. 
not only withstanding the fact that you have the availability to serve this population during this AEP window, you might think, well, you know, I'm going to be really busy for this three month window. And, you know, and then whew, thankfully, you know, January 1st comes and you can kind of set that aside. What's nice about this, though, is it is something that you can actually sell all year long. Not only the fact that you do have these agents that we've been talking about, you do have the availability to have people who are going to be switching their plans and individuals who are going to qualify for a special election period. Now, that special election period, of course, does have caveats. You know, they need to have things that have changed, like, for example, they've moved outside the plan's uh, coverage area or they permanently moved and, you know, they have a new advantage plan and, 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 and different plans are now available. Um, possibly they were incarcerated and they've now been released. Whatever the, the individual need is at that point, the thing to take out of that, though, is that this is something that you can actually sell all year long. You not only have this wonderful window of opportunity through this AEP season, but as December 1st then moves into January 1st and February 1st and March 1st, it's something you can actually stretch out through as the year goes by. So if you look at Medicare product itself and, and, you, and you're thinking just, you know, out of all these facts that I just showed, why would you really want to consider selling this? The ACA, the Affordable Care Act, as everybody is probably more than likely aware, has been really up and down. It's been really fluctuating and it's really kind of been inconsistent with where it's going to be going and what's going to be the status of it from one year to the next. I can tell you right now that the Medicare product, it is here to stay. There are a continuous pool of people that are paying into this every year and this is a very strong product that has not shown any signs of stopping. It's only growing and what that means is that the opportunity itself is growing as well. On the other hand, you know, is speaking of back on the ACA side of things, a lot of the times, if you even look back to 2016, for example, like when BCBS insurers, they eliminated their commissions on their IFP plans, their individual family plans down to nothing through this through anybody that sold through the state exchanges. That was something that you're like, well, when 2016 rolled around, oh, what am I going to really do now at this point? Medicare, you don't have that worry whatsoever. The nice thing about that as well is that putting the commission word aside, you have the other word, and that's the big R word, and that is residuals. Those residuals that are going to come in year after year after year, especially with the way that the market is growing, that in and of itself, besides the rewarding experience and besides everything else that you know might have already been previously mentioned, that right there is going to be something that's going to be setting you up as an agent to ensure that your financial future is sound as well. You know, with the fact that the ACA market has been fluctuating so much, you know, a lot of people are really hesitant to jump into those market exchanges. Now, as the year has progressed, you know, there has been a little bit of stabilization. But the problem with it, though, is still is that there's there's just that gnawing worry that's in everybody's back of their minds. Like, you know, is this something that I even want to jump into? So is are your leads going to be there? Is the, is the book of business going to actually be able to grow through this type of a product? Well, if you look at the Medicare product, 50 million Medicare eligible seniors this year alone. That right there is a solid number. And that number, again, is doing nothing but growing. We're looking at 65 million by 2030 and almost 84 million by 2050 eligible Americans for Medicare. So besides the flex or besides the fluctuations between the ACA market and you know the unknown factor with that, Medicare product itself, it's very stable. And if you just if you revisit that question, why you really should sell it, in my mind, it's a really simple answer. And that answer is the fact that you not only have the availability to have a rewarding experience with all these wonderful clients, but you get the opportunity to make money. And those residuals are going to really show off and pay off in the end if you start taking the time now to do what you need to prepare so that when you can actually start speaking with somebody when the AEP opens up, that is going to then mean dollars in your pockets and when the day is all said and done. So when AEP opens up, I guess that would be your next question, right? So 
when is AEP? When is this window of opportunity that we can actually utilize to begin selling? So right now, besides all the preparations that we're doing to get ready for AEP, AEP itself is open from October 15th through December 7th. So if you look at the calendar, that's a really small window of time. I think it comes out to be some 54 or 55 days. Now, if you take out holidays and you take out weekends and you take out the occasional day that you might want to go with the family to the beach, that really kind of shortens that window for you. But the good news, again, is the fact that this product is not just specifically set to sell during that window. You can be selling this all year round through those special election periods that I mentioned. So <clears throat> it is going to be very busy from October 15th to December 7th. And that is amazing. You're going to do a lot of really good business. You're going to make a lot of really good connections and get a lot of really good referrals. But then the next step in that is to solidify that business because it's going to be something that's going to be available through for you as the year goes on and throughout the remainder of the year. So really, since you've, you've got now a really good solid idea of the fact that Medicare is an amazing product to sell and, and when you can do it, what should you really be doing now or what should you have already been maybe starting to do to really kind of get yourself in a position to be prepared so that when that October 15th date comes, you're ready to roll and out the door and you're picking up the phone and you're dialing or, or you're setting those one-on-one -on -one meetings. Well, I personally have a list of about eight main things that you can actually look at to really kind of get yourself prepared uh, to sell by that date. So one of the main things that you really want to start first looking at is looking into creating a marketing plan that suits you. Now, and I highlight the word your in this bubble here to create your marketing plan for a specific reason. Everybody's different. I am not like you, you're not like me, you're not like her as the line goes down. So everybody's style of selling is different from the person next to you. And that's okay. I personally wouldn't want everybody to sell the same way. You do want to have the individuality that you call your own. But really, once you've really focused in on what your individuality is and the way that you like to sell, what do you do then by taking that information and then putting it out there so that the population can get from you what they need? Well, you have a lot of different options to do marketing. Uh, and these are just five real quick things. I mean, there is a, a whole gamut of opportunity out there. The marketing itself is its own beast. And that's something that we will be diving into in later seminars as well, too. And as the weeks and, and uh, month goes on. But just some real five quick topics of something that you really want to look at if you haven't considered yet is a lot of organizations out there today do allow you to market yourself on their own landing page. They will give you your own um, agent landing page. And at that point that you can direct the funnel down the direction it needs to go. But you can also even consider making your own website. If you're an independent agent and you're out there and you have the availability and the know-how and the, war with the wherewithal to do that, I highly recommend doing that. Internet, websites, search marketing, search engine optimization, those keywords and those buzzwords, buzzwords are huge in the industry today. You could probably sit down and do an entire session, an entire seminar just on search engine optimization, marketing yourself. You know, let's, let's just say marketing yourself through Facebook, for example, that could be its own session in and of itself. So there's a lot of opportunities online for you to really get yourself out there. But really what you want to kind of focus on more or less right now, as far as our preparation steps is just really kind of keep the internet and the website options there in the forefront of a really good key marketing aspect that you really need to consider diving into if you haven't looked at it already. Obviously, you do want to always make sure that you're familiarizing yourself with the carrier sites that are out there and the quoting tools available for you. Um, I know myself and our and our and some of our other trainers like to, to joke about some of the email signatures that they see, but you know, you yourself are your own individual and that's fine, but try and keep the email signature tagline as short and sweet as possible. Uh, the statistic that's out there that I just read yesterday is 98% of individuals that read emails only read the first two lines. They're out of the email within under 20 seconds. So the fact that you have the quote of the day down there, even though that quote might be an amazing quote that motivates me personally, nine times out of 10, it's not going to be seen. So while you can spend the time doing other things, make sure, of course, it's just, just short, sweet professional signature lines so that it gets the point across, get your contact information out there. And if they do need to rely on it, you know, the appropriate info is there. 
Another make sure another step to make sure that you're looking at here as far as your entire marketing plan is make sure that you are contacting all your existing clientele via email or phone. You do want to reach out to them periodically or at least, you know, if they're only a once a year type of a contact, let them know that you're still in the business, you still are doing health insurance and you're still their agent um, of choice that you really want to be there for them when this year's AEP opens up and they want if they need to make a change or something. And of course, you want to contact your COIs, which is your centers of influence. Uh, those can be those can run the gamut of anything from you know your doctors and all of that stretching of the fingers in that aspect, your local churches, you know lawyers, accountants. There there's a plethora of people that are out there that would make up those COIs and, and those centers of influence. Really, kind of look into that if if you're having trouble trying to determine where to try and get more leads from. It's an amazing direction to look at and an amazing source of leads in general. So once you've really kind of focused in and, and you know your marketing style and you really know what you've done and you've got everything prepared, the next thing that you want to do is you really want to look at making sure that you've completed your AHIP. Now, AHIP itself is required for everybody that's going to be selling Medicare. Um, these rules and regulations that are that are issued by CMS, which is the Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services, they're the ones that govern the sale and marketing of Medicare-related plans. And they are the ones that require this specific uh, certification to be done before continuing on with being able to sell Medicare. So what you want to make sure that you do is it, regardless if you're a first time user of the site or if this is your second, fifth or 10th time using it, you do need to make sure that you are taking your AHIP every year. If you are a first timer to the site, you are going to need to register. You'll need your NPN, social security number, date of birth, all of that wonderful information so that you can create your account and get set up with a password and everything. Again, as I mentioned, you do have to recertify annually. Um, something nice about the second year on is there is a shorter version if you passed the course last year. So that's something to keep in the back of your mind is that it will get shorter as the years go on. Um, something also to keep in the forefront of your mind is there is a cost associated with it. Standard cost right now is around $175. Um, there are different carriers out there that offer discounts. As a matter of fact, I was speaking with a training that I had earlier in the day a couple hours ago and an agent advised me already that there are carriers out there that have discounts of $25 to 50. United Healthcare actually being one of the ones with 50. And if you need information on that, I actually have all of that contact information for them as well too. So really kind of if you can save some money there, that's extra money to put in your pocket that you can use towards that search engine marketing or that marketing budget or just extra money in your pocket to use for gas if you need to go from one of those face-to-face -face meetings to a second one. Something else to make sure that you remember is you do only have three attempts to take it. After the third attempt, Okay, you're going to reach into the wallet and grab the credit card again, and that 175 is going to come out. So the, the main point to take away from that is to make sure that you're studying hard, print and save as many of those documents as you can, take notes as often as you can, screenshot what you can, download what you can, so that when it comes time to take the test, you can focus your entire um, your entire time on that test, making sure that you read all the questions and answers before answering and that you have no distractions so that you can get through that and pass as you go through. At the end of passing AHIP, you do have the availability to transmit those results to the carriers and all that information is actually lined out on their website. And something to keep in mind here is I do have additional information available for everybody today. Um, what it does, it's going to go through some online registration steps and, and some and a couple helpful study tips. There's not many tips as far as passing AHIP itself included in there because um, within AHIP, there are training modules that you're going to go through and learn, and you're going to have the opportunity to print all those out and save them and utilize them. So you're going to get the majority of those that information online. So as long as you're taking the time as you go through that, it's, it's going to be real easy for you. But again, just in case, there is a walkthrough available in today's broadcast in the handout section. If for some reason you don't have the availability to download that, you can contact me. Um, I will give you a, a good email address here towards the end of the session that you can reach out to. Or, of course, you can always uh, ping me inside the questions or the chat box if you need that information as well. So 
once you have the AHIP portion done and completed, the next thing that you're going to want to do is looking at contracting with the carriers. And again, you can actually transmit those contracts and the certifications once you're done with AHIP right at that point once you've passed. But making sure that you really get contracted with the carriers that you want to is going to be key here. Now, a lot of people have asked me, what, what carrier should I contract with? I mean, who is the best carrier out there? The best carrier out there, I can't give you that information. I don't know because that's actually going to vary from year to year. But what I can tell you is that the top five that we would suggest, at least the top three nationally, would be UHC, Humana, and Aetna. On the regional side of things, Anthem and Cigna. Those are the top five that we here in the training team would, it would suggest at least to start with as a foundation and a basis to look at for getting contracted with. Anything else above and beyond that, you can definitely do the marketing and the information gathering in your local area and find out really what is going to be the best option to service the demographic with where you're at or where you're deciding to sell at. Really that in and of itself could also be another series and seminar, just really kind of diving down and drilling down deep into the local demographics and the local trends in that area to try and find out a specific carrier. So while there are people that might say, well, I've got the best carrier out there, all that I can say for you right now is that these five I would highly recommend um, and suggest getting contracted with at least in the beginning to start out with. So really after you contracted with them, you wanna make sure that you get those certificates done. Some of those carriers that I mentioned just earlier a little bit ago, like United, Humana, and Aetna, a lot of those carriers to get certified with them, they might have different uh, requirements and different things that are needed to be done in order to complete their certification. Sometimes that can just be as simple as a notification via email. Um, you, you can sometimes easily go online and take a real quick certification and submit and be certified at that point. But then on the other hand, you some of the carriers out there do require a face-to-face -face requirement uh, or even a blended where it's face-to-face -face and online in order to fully complete their certification process. To make sure if you if you don't have the information, you can always contact the carrier's broker support um, and they will advise you accordingly uh, which of those steps or which of those requirements are needed for those specific carriers so that you can finish the certifications. Um, some of the prerequisites as far as certain carriers and AHIP are concerned is the, mostly at least the advice that I would give is that I would recommend making sure that your AHIP is done first. Um, there are carriers out there that might not require it per se, but just for the sake of making it easier so that everything flows, I just recommend making sure that your AHIP is done or at least in the process of being done before you even continue moving forward with the certification process. So really similarly though to the AHIP testing as far as the certification testing is that some really good key tips to take away with when you're considering getting certified, try and really focus on one at a time. You don't really want to get too backlogged on those and make sure then suddenly that you've forgotten about one. Um, really kind of just do one at a time. It's really at your discretion how fast or slow you want to go with that. But the, the, another thing, though, to consider is really don't wait till the end of September, October to start them. Uh, it can be a little bit of a lengthy process, and sometimes there are delays or there could be a hiccup with something. So you really, obviously, you know, pre-planning is always the best step in that aspect. So the quicker and sooner you get it done now, the easier it is once October 15th hits to get everything rolling and then just start firing down the alleyway of the sales aspect of it. Similarly with AHEP, you have the option to save your PDFs. You can do print screens, screenshots, downloading, write things down. Anything that you really want to do to make sure that you are taking the notes and gathering the information that you need that's going to make you successful so that when it comes time to get certified or if you're passing that certification test that you can go ahead and do so and then submit. Again, similarly, just take your time. Make sure that you're in an area where there's no distractions. Read all of the answers before choosing them. And then, of course, once done and you've passed, save those certificates of the completion so that they can be transmitted accordingly when uh, times be. Uh, a, a little small note to keep in mind, though, as I did mention a little bit earlier, that some of the carriers do require face-to-face -face as part of the certification process. Make sure that you are RSVPing in advance for those, because if you don't, it is, I have seen people be denied to go to the event, and then a certification gets delayed, and then October 15th hit, and they're not certified yet, and then it's just kind of a scramble to go forward from there. So make sure that you do RSVP for those events. Looking back at the entire checklist process after the certification process is done, 
And this could even be something that you're really doing simultaneously is you really want to make sure that you're getting to know the entire systems and the carrier sites, the quoting tools, the lead generating tools, all of those that you're getting familiar with so that come time for everything to go that you're rolling as quickly and as easily as possible. Of course, Building your pipeline is something that you're constantly doing as an agent. Um, you're going to be reaching out to those individual book of businesses as the time comes and as you're getting those notifications of people that are, uh, let's say, aging in or even with the individuals that are, are renewing so that those residuals can, can continue. So really these next two steps of building your pipeline and then expanding your, your current pipeline and reviewing your book of business kind of go hand in hand. It's something that's gonna be something that you're gonna be doing constantly. It's going to be an ever-changing and ever-evolving portion of this entire checklist because you're always going to have agents. You're always going to have individuals that might qualify for an SCP for some reason or another. So really expanding and building that entire pipeline is something that's going to be a continuous process to this entire flow. And last but not least, of course, you always want to make sure that you're staying compliant. One of the things that you'll see as you go through the AHIP certification process is that in and of itself, there are modules within there that are going to discuss all the compliance requirements. And, you know, they can be a little lengthy, um, but make sure that you are taking your time on that aspect because it is super important to remember compliance is always something that uh, it needs to be at the, you know, at the forefront of, of everything that you're doing as far as marketing or even speaking with individuals will come time for AP to roll out. So in general, the, the entire checklist and a whole of these eight steps is something that really you can kind of just take down as those main bullet points, be like, all right, have I completed my marketing plan? Have I completed my AHIP? Has, are all my contracts done? Are all those certificates done and transmitted? Do I really, am I really familiar with all those carrier sites? And, you know, is this, is this the good time now to start continuing to expand on the pipeline or have you been doing that? And then, of course, making sure you stay compliant. These are just really some of the main bullet points that we here and I personally would recommend so that come October 15th, excuse me, come October 15th, you can just dive right on in and uh, no hiccups whatsoever. One thing that I like to close with generally when I'm, when I'm speaking in, in any sort of a training seminar is, is always remember that whenever you're speaking with, an age, with a uh, client, rather, whether they be over 65 or under 65, you really want to always make sure that you're diving in and taking the time that's needed to build the trust and doing a proper needs analysis from the start. Making sure that you make that connection from the start and ensuring that you're actually making a bond with that individual client is going to be something that not only you're going to appreciate because it's going to make things easier for you, as far as establishing what is going to be best suited to fit their needs, but it's going to be appreciated to the client because they are then going to know that you are someone that has integrity, you're sincere, you're reliable, and then of course, what does that mean in the end? It means those residuals and all of that repeat business through the referral process. So that's something I always keep at the heart of things and I like to close with usually. Um, if you do have questions on this or if you have other areas that you'd like me to personally touch upon as far as the Medicare topic is concerned, I do have an ongoing series every Wednesday, as you're, as you're probably aware here. Um, for you folks, it's at about 10 o'clock Pacific time, 12 o'clock Central Standard time every Wednesday. You can reach out to me at training at hcpsales.com with any questions on this. Uh, if for some reason you have problems downloading the little handout or if you have any questions about the topic or the materials we discovered, definitely feel free to, to reach out to us and let us know. Um, on that note, uh, just a, a quick uh, shameless plug here for the upcoming weeks that uh, we do have starting next week, parts A and B of Medicare and then the following weeks, part C and D. So that's really where we're gonna dive and drill down deep into the heart of what Medicare is in the individual sector that we that we kind of just uh, did a high level overview of today. Um, we do do a repeat on that because we do like to make sure that everybody is covered. And then of course, we're gonna go over some Medigap and, uh, Medigap and some review process as well as the weeks go through, including which as the following weeks come up, I am gonna be doing some compliance reminders of things and just kind of tacking those in because it is always something that you wanna keep in the, in the forefront when you are doing the marketing on this. So I appreciate the time that everybody took today to join me for this. Um, I hope that the rest of your day is amazing. Uh, what I would like to do is I'm gonna stay online for about the next 15 minutes or so and answer any questions through the questions box or the chat box if you have anything. Go ahead and put those in there and I'd be glad to answer them. And then I will uh, go ahead and end 
the session after that. But if you don't have any questions, thanks for joining me and take care. I hope you guys have a good rest of your day today. Bye-bye. Thank you.